Earth travels around the sun at just the right distance for life to exist. But what if our planet were suddenly thrown from its orbit and spiraling into the blazing heat of the sun? How long could we survive? We haven't evolved to breathe hot air. If you're outside and it's 141 degrees, you'll burn your lungs. As you get closer to the sun, there's this death wave that moves both directions towards both poles, and people have to keep moving farther and farther, north or south, to stay alive. You start reaching temperatures where aluminum melts and even steel. The whole memory of civilization is completely erased. Beneath the North Atlantic, something strange is happening to the world's most famous shipwreck. The Titanic, 3,800 meters down, is in the inky, inky blackness of, uh, of the deep ocean. The Titanic has been trapped in the dark since it sank in 1912. But today, the wreck is suddenly bathed in sunlight, and it starts to rise from the ocean floor. In a field outside Houston, Texas, two amateur astronomers find that their stargazing app, which has always been accurate before, isn't lining up with the night sky. The stars are in the wrong place. Normally, every night the stars and planets look like they're in slightly different parts of the sky because the Earth is in a slightly different place in its yearly orbit around the sun. But on this night, the stars and planets rise exactly where they did the night before. So astronomers would think, oh, I just screwed up something. But then they would talk to the other astronomers, and every telescope in the world would be wrong. The reason the stars are no longer changing their positions is that after four and a half billion years, the Earth is no longer orbiting around the sun. As we fall closer and closer towards the sun, people seek shelter inside mountains, while cities are attacked by armies of sand. If Earth were thrown out of orbit and kept falling closer to the heat of the sun, what would happen to humanity? Across the world, the extreme heat turns fertile land into desert. Egypt is no longer nourished by the waters of the Nile. When the Nile begins to drop in water level, all of the surrounding area that it used to flood will start to dry out. What follows is a catastrophe that dwarfs the 10 plagues of the Bible. You start to get sandstorms to the point where you have sand blowing all the way from Western Africa into Israel and beyond. You would actually have the same thing at the same time in the American Southwest, because they're at the same latitude. You would have Phoenix and Tucson dumping all of their sand toward New Mexico, New Mexico dumping it into Houston. There would be massive sandstorms from Eastern California that would stretch three states over. The blowing sand blocks streets and roadways and attacks people with a vengeance. Across the American West and Southwest, thousands die of suffocation, and many more 
flood hospitals with lung infections. Across the world, the death toll is rising. Over a million people have died from hurricanes, sandstorms, and heat stroke. As for Lady Liberty, her skin is copper. Her copper torch is coated in 24 karat gold. The gold melts away, and the copper flame turns to liquid. You start reaching temperatures where aluminum melts and even steel melts. You have limestone melting and granite melting. The whole memory of civilization is completely erased. There is nothing left of us. Ten hours into the 65th day, the temperature exceeds 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, even mountains in the mantle of the Earth simply melt. What was once what we call a rocky planet really becomes a boiling soup of all sorts of melting rocks and metals. Then, two and a half hours later, one million miles from the sun, the sun's gravitational pull on the Earth changes the very shape of our planet. The final destruction of the Earth is not so much the evaporation of the water and the boiling of the rock. The final doom of the Earth is not the heat effects from the sun, but the sun's gravity. The gravity triggers every single earthquake fault. Massive tumblers shake the planet. Also, fissures in Earth's crust will open the passage for magma to flow through known openings, new openings, and volcanic vents. Every volcano on Earth explodes. The Earth starts to get torn apart. As the crust breaks, the remaining ocean water rises, pulled by the sun's gravity, and evaporates in the sun's overwhelming heat. And so the final light that the Titanic sees in the deep ocean, which has been dark all this time, is going to be the water of the Earth itself flows off of the planet and is evaporated as it goes. There will be a brief moment where all the Earth's water evaporates. There will be a brief moment where the sun will dawn upon the Titanic once more. The Titanic sees the brilliant flare of the sun, and in those last few seconds, the Earth itself is pulled apart, and literally every bit of the Earth itself is exposed to the solar atmosphere. The Earth at its very end looks very much like the Earth at its infancy. A very hot ball of lava deformed by the forces of the sun. So what you see is a history in reverse. The gravity becomes so strong that Earth will deform and the Earth will simply fall into pieces. And then that's it. In the end, everything gets destroyed. The ultimate fate of the Earth is that it will be ripped apart into these chunks that will then fly into the sun. When we pollute the pristine hydrogen atmosphere of the sun with everything that has ever lived on Earth, it may produce some kind of signature that distant astronomers other places could see on our star and say, hmm, something really crazy happened there. <laughs>